Located in the heart of Dublin's north inner city, one place cares for children from all corners of the country. A home from home, offering hope at times of uncertainty and strength in times of need. Inviting us into their world, we witness difficult decision-making, life-changing surgery, and powerful success stories. In the emergency department, we never know what's going to come through the door next. Parent staff have to be ready for surgery at any given time. I see you treat critically ill children 24-7. Following the journey of families and their children undergoing vital and life-saving treatment, welcome to Temple Street Children's Hospital. day ward, long-term patient Thomas Fleming has arrived from Galway. He was born with a condition. It's um, a form of Beale syndrome, what he has. Uh, it's all to do with bones. Like It affects the back, the fingers, the legs, the knees. Thomas has a condition, a rare condition called Beale syndrome, which is also known as uh, congenital contractural arachnodactyly. Arachnodactyly means long spider-like fingers. The condition is characterized by contractures of joints, so he has problems with his knees, his ankles, his toes, his elbows, and his fingers. It's extremely rare, and um, there's, there's only a handful of children in the country with this condition, um, so it's not something you'd see every day, certainly. Thomas has been very unfortunate in that his condition is, is quite severe, and he's had a lot of problems with other areas, particularly his spine, and um, has had to have m multiple procedures there. Yeah. So far, well, he's had his two kneecaps done. He's had his tendons on his both feet. He them done twice. He's had uh, rods in his back to try and straighten his spine. So he had three three operations already on his back, where he's going to have more in the near future on the back. Today, Tomas, he's having an operation on his fingers, where he has spider fingers. So they're planning of going to straighten them. His big problem is inability to straighten his fingers. He's got contractures of his joints and also some skin webbing across those joints. It would have limited his range of, of uh, functionality in terms of what he could grip, what he could do with his hands particularly with, with reaching for things uh, to, to enclose them in his grasp and also with letting things go to see how this one goes before going after his dominant hand. The one he's getting done today, he doesn't really use it that much. It's the other hand he uses for everything. Well, this one I use for writing and this one I like do everything with. And like this one is very weak, I can't do anything with it. Which side are they going to do today? What exactly um, is this, this hand. hand? This one. So I'm going to put the bracelet on this hand so it's not in the way. See, everything he does with his fingers, it's not with his fingers. It's more like with the wrists, you know, he kind of grabs things, you know, like that. Okay. And I know he had a hip respiratory problems in the past, but he's not on any CPAP or anything like that. No, he's not on no. Any health. no. Thomas is relaxed. He was seen by the nurses and we did his weight and his abs and got him ready for theatre. Temperature? Oh, the temperature? Oh, it's grand here. You can see the as good as a nurse himself. <laughs> yeah, you can feel it, the difference in nurse. <laughs> Sweetheart, we'll just get you up and weigh you. Take your hand off the side there. I believe that it will get worse as he gets older if it's not corrected. So it's to help him to maintain ordinary life, to be able to pick up things and to use his hands properly the way the rest of us do. I'm not quite sure how straight they'll be, but he's going to try his best. He's still at the waiting stage yet, he has to be called up to theatre, so hopefully any minute now he'll be going up. In the 
emergency department, two-year-old Sean Sherwin has arrived. Sean is a two-year-old boy who came to Temple Street today because he is not walking on the left leg. He tripped and fell yesterday evening and uh, after the fall he was sore. Parents got him to sleep and he woke up this morning and was refusing to put weight on the left foot. Just gonna have a look at your leg, all right? We'll start with this one, eh? We'll start with a good one, eh? Is that sore? Huh? Is that sore? That's not sore, is it? We'll touch the bad one. We'll touch the bad one. Toddlers are very busy, as you know. Uh, they do tend to run around. They do tend to trip a lot and fall. Mama. Yes, he's saying mama. mama. <laughs> That's posh, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I think he was saying, Mama. It's nice, yeah. It's nice, Mama. <laughs> okay, can we see him just walk? Just take a few steps, eh? Come on, let's go. Come on, over He's reluctant to, me. to walk, is he? Come on, over mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. Go to Mommy. Come on. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to put okay. pressure. Okay, he doesn't want to put pressure. When kids his age four, they can get what we call uh, toddler fractures. And that's what I'm going to look for. So I'm going to do an x ray. I'll do the leg and I'll do the foot, all right? And yeah, then I'll, brilliant. And then I'll I'll see then. The likely scenario though is that he sprained something rather than um, broke something. Brilliant. That's for being a, a brave monkey. boy. No, he doesn't like stickers. Oh, you, don't, you, don't, you don't want stickers? Okay. Thanks very much. No problem. See you no soon. Problem. All right, see you soon. Eh? He appeared to have pain uh, on that left foot, so we sent him for an x ray. Hello. Thanks. Good, thank you. Thank you. So we need to take off his shoes and socks and we'll take off the trousers. So. Okay. All right, so just we'll pop them up here while I do it. Yeah. The next ray he got a bit of a fright. No. But after a few tears and he was okay then, yeah. you know. It's a busy day in A and E as four-year-old Oscar Sargasen also arrives with an injury. So tell me, why are you here today? What have you done to yourself? Tell the doctor what happened. I tripped and then the was going dripping down my head. We tripped and crashed into the corner of a table. Okay. And hurt your head, didn't you? Yeah. And it bled like after that happened. Yeah, okay. straight away. He didn't pass out or no, anything like no. that. Okay. Or he didn't vomit or anything. He didn't vomit. No. I'm just going to have a quick look at that. Okay. Then. Is that very sore at the moment? Yeah. Such no. a brave boy. Oh yeah, that's it there. It was the first time I actually had a proper look at it. Pad was quite deep now, but this, I'm sure they've seen much worse in here. So that's a little bit deep. So you. We'll just need to pop on some glue and some paper stitch on that. So it's okay. All right. Okay, great. We'd see an awful lot of head injuries here through Temple Street Emergency Department on a daily basis, and we'd glue an awful lot of head injuries. And before, they used to stitch them, and they'd have to go to theatre under a general anaesthetic. So now it prevents all that. So it's less trauma for the child and for the parent. Now, Oscar, how are you? Hi. Hi. Are you good? Okay. What yeah. happened to you? I just read something that dropping down my head. Oh my gosh! Usually you get you get two extremes of children. You get children that are real chatty and they'll be wanting to tell you all about it like Oscar was. Or you get children that are real frightened and they need an awful lot of reassurance. You turn your head nice and gently over to mom. Perfect. That is super. Is mom okay? It's alright. It's okay. It's okay. It's alright. It's alright. With his x-rays complete, Sean returns to the emergency department. I was looking at his x-rays and uh, it looks fine. Yeah. Yeah, it looks fine. I don't think he has a fracture. So, hold on. Having said that, he does have something there. It's actually overlapping with this with this bone. So, you, you don't see it as clearly as you should have seen it, but it, it is there. The x-ray has shown that he's got a fracture of the foot on the base of his first metatarsal, which is just uh, on the inner aspect of the foot. It wouldn't be your typical fracture that you see in, in a toddler. They tend to fracture more their leg, um, especially a bone called the tibia. Uh, but you do see the odd foot fractures in them. Does it mean cast? Oh yeah, we'll have to put a, a back slab on him. They don't like casts. Toddlers don't like anything that would, that would um, impede their movement. But the thing is, um, some of them, when they do have fractures, we don't actually put them in casts. It depends. So. Um, a lot of toddler fractures can be managed without cast, but in his particular case, he was very sore when he put his foot on the ground. So he, he's, he was better off having a cast put on. It's okay, it's a little bit sore, so we're just going to measure him. They're going to do a cast now until they bring him back to the fracture clinic, and then he'll have to be put in a, a full cast, a, a hard one. Okay. At least we know now, we can deal with it, and we know what's wrong. It's just not known that was 
a little bit daunting, but at least we know that he's going to be okay now, just a fracture. Anything on the feet is very painful for children to walk, and um, the cast would immobilise it, the leg. Um, now, the disadvantage of a cast on is that he can't walk, so children get very upset when they feel they're restricted. They know then they can't run around, they can't walk, and, they, and it is sore. Anything like that would be sore. The temporary cast we put on in the emergency department is kind of a half a cast. After rest and elevation at home, they come back to the outpatient department. While Sean heads for home with a temporary cast, Tomás is making his way towards theatre. Oh, yeah, Make sure we have the right one. Come, Come on, Seven, 26th yeah. of the 4th, 2001. Yeah, three. I'm very used to going up to the theatre and I'm used to getting operations done. You've been in with them before, haven't you? Yeah. So you know the routine. Yeah. Generally speaking, they go and sleep with a scanning gas, but yeah. sometimes it's with the drip in the hand, okay? Okay. So are you ready to call it? Yeah. Yeah. Are you ready? I met him some months ago. The idea was that we'd get him into the operating theatre and we would. Um, to do a procedure where we could straighten his fingers uh, as much as we could and correct the webbing of the, of the uh, skin across the joints to try and improve his range of motion. Uh, most particularly in his first web space, he, a, he had a very confined first web space um, and that tends to limit your ability to grasp larger uh, items such as cups, glasses, that sort of stuff. Uh, so it, the priority was a first web release but we also released the, the fingers as well. This young man, we're going to for the sake of... Uh Check. 26th of the 4th, 2001. Check. 312944. Check. Uh, does Tomas have any allergies? No. Okay. And it will be this new at the same time. Oh, I didn't. Good Big breaths here, Tomas. Okay, now. Big breaths. You can hold your record. You ready? Good man. Good man. Thank you. Thank you. Essentially, he had five separate operations on, on his hand all at the same time. Um, one for each of the uh, contractures in his fingers, and one for the first web space of, between his thumb and index fingers, which was tight. He would have had release of fibrotic constrictions in the joints and in, in the web space. Um, some muscles were lifted off their origin to allow the web space to come out, and then he had a correction of the skin to a, what's called a Z-plasty to increase the length of the skin and to correct any webbing that he had in his fingers. In each of the fingers he had a joint contracture released and then skin adjustment to keep the fingers straighter and some pins to hold the corrections. He will need a change of dressing in a week and he'll need removal of pins in three weeks. After a complicated surgery, Tamar spends the night on the top flat ward. I was awful tired when I got back. I was very hungry because I was fasting all the day yesterday and until I got back from theatre. He was quite comfortable after the surgery. Um, he had his uh, regular analgesia, which is pain relief. All he wanted was milk, milk, milk. I was up half the night with him all night, like, you know. Not really in pain, but a bit of a tingle in my fingers, so. It feels much better that I have it done now. It's going to make a very big difference. In A&D, staff are preparing to glue Oscar's head wound. All I'm going to do now is clean it with some water, nice and gently. Basically what you have to do is give it a good clean to make sure that there is no dirt inside in the wound. And once you're happy that there is no dirt in the wound, you line the two sides up. And if you've good alignment, meaning that both sides are meeting exactly and you've no skin loss, so you're not missing any pieces of skin, then you can glue your wound. But if you've any little bit of skin loss, you wouldn't glue. And of course, because it's his face, you want to be absolutely certain that it's going to be perfect before you apply your glue. Wait until the boys in crash hear this. They're going to think it's so cool. All right, it's okay. All I'm going to do now is hold it close like this. No, it's okay. Brilliant. So the glue is only like cream. And you don't even feel it. That's the most important thing. Sometimes 
to do the gluing like we did with Oscar, you'd have to wrap them in a blanket. But actually, he was so able to interact with us that we were able to do it without wrapping him in a blanket. The biggest fear they have is that you're going to hurt them because the cut is already hurting them and they've got such a fright with the fall so that you're not going to cause any more distress to them by hurting them. So explaining to him exactly what you're doing each step tends to help them at that age. You count them for me. One, two, two three. Once you break your skin at all, it will scar, but there's going to be minimal scarring there with that because the edges of it lined up very nicely and the glue stuck it very, very good back together. They're all done. Up to mom. Well, you're all better now than the nurse fixed it? Yeah, I was, wasn't watching where I was going. You weren't watching where you were going. Okay, did we learn our lesson? Yeah. Can you watch where you're running? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm just going to walk. You're just going to walk? That's closed now completely. Mm -hmm. So after a few days, the little white stickers, they'll start to lift at the edges okay. and just peel them off very gently. Okay. Thanks a million. No. He went home an hour after the gluing and then the mum was advised to keep that wound dry for five days. So you're free to go. Say thank you. See you later. Bye bye. You're very good. See you later. One week since his last visit to Temple Street, Thomas returns to have his cast removed. Today he's back for a change of plaster and a split mat. I'm looking forward to seeing my fingers straightened. And I feel a bit nervous. I'm used to seeing them bend, like. Thomas had his first change of dressing today. Everything's looking nice and healthy. The wounds are healing well. He has a little bit of blistering um, near the sites of the K-wire insertions, so we're going to just clean those up and uh, give him some antibiotics just on the off chance there might be a little bit of infection starting there. We've changed his dressing, put him back in a splint, and we are going to see him back in two weeks' time for removal of pins, and then we'll start his rehabilitation. returns to the ward, Sean is also back at the hospital. Want this one? You open that one. Do you want me to help you? Will I help you? It's been a few days and he was quite upset when he was getting the temporary cast on but he adjusted to it more than anybody else at home. It was a bit more of a struggle than I thought it would have been with a three week old baby and trying to manage him. He obviously can't walk in the cast. He's not allowed to put any pressure down on his heel at all. So him on one arm and the baby on the other, do you know what I mean, in the car seat, so pretty hectic. So today is time for the permanent um, cast. This one was only a temporary one until we got the appointment to come in here and get the proper one on. You seem to be hurting him there today, that's good. Yeah. That's when they thought he was sore the last day. Yeah. He's getting better obviously, but on the x-ray we do see that there is a little hairline crack, so he needs two more weeks of plaster. And that's it? And that's it. Brilliant. He's going to go from here to here. Okay. And he's allowed to walk on it. Okay. All right. And it'll give him more support than this one? It will, yeah. Okay. hard all the way around, so it won't break up like that. Yeah. His foot is getting quite tired, and in the evening times he's starting to crawl, so it, it's, it's, to me it's like it's, he's starting to throb maybe. So with this one there's going to be a lot more support and pressure on the foot there to help him so I don't think it's going to hurt as much so that's what they've said so we're really anxious and looking forward to getting this one on today now. What happened to him? He just slipped on the tiles, literally tripped over his own foot and couldn't believe it. Oh you are brilliant. Lovely. You are so good, look at this. Is that your new boot? Oh, oh you let's wrap your leg up. Your new shoes. Oh wow. So you have a little peek for these toes. <laughs> Hello to all your toes. Good that you can see so many of them yeah. with this cast, with children we couldn't see it. Little. Yeah. And will we give you a little shoe as well? Yeah. yeah. You'll be able to run around with this on. Okay. No. Yeah. Thanks a million. Right, no Thank bother. you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Having had his pins removed. Tomas returns to the physio department to commence the final part of his procedure. Today he has come to get his plaster removed and a splint made for night time. His fingers, they come on very good 
I was amazed. He'd done an absolutely brilliant job and and Thomas himself was shocked. Because when the bandage came off he went, Wow. You know, he was shocked big time. I was really surprised. I wasn't expecting it to be this good. And it was just a bit weird when I got it off. My hand felt like um, a helium balloon going up. It was so light and um, I'm really happy with it. Can you leave your hand flat down for me? Because did you straighten your elbows out actually first? Go for my Can this one straighten right out? The hard part's going to be the rehab. Uh, the, the, the surgery is really the easiest part, both for him and for me. Uh, the hard part will be the rehab. Can you try to wave that from side to side? Lovely. Can you get it right over this way as far as you can? Brilliant. We'll probably get him to a stage where he has better extension and, and a better range of motion, but he certainly won't have normal functionality or normal range of motion. We'll follow him for a number of years until he's fully grown. Hopefully his hand function will be perfectly adequate for uh, the activities of daily living, which is the plan. And we probably will have to operate on his other hand if we get a good result on this one. Can you put it down flat for me so I can measure it? Good man. Perfect. She said that she could, she'd um, show me a stretch to do during the day. Get the thumb moving because it's kind of stiff. You could never do anything with that hand. You know, because his hand was always crumbled up. Even to grab things he couldn't. And today, to look at it, it's amazing. To be able to hold a pint glass then in his hand.